Attorneys for a Kentucky landfill accused of illegal dumping of radioactive waste appeared in court today. The University of Kentucky announcing recommendations for a controversial mural on campus. Florida is preparing as Hurricane Hermine is expected to hit the coast overnight. Our own Micah Harris is in Florida with the latest. This is WKYT News at 5.30. Good evening and thanks for watching WKYT. Attorneys for an Estill County landfill appeared in court this morning asking a judge to dismiss a lawsuit against them. Earlier this year, the EPA found four violations regarding the disposal of radioactive waste at the Blue Ridge landfill. At today's hearing, attorneys representing the landfill said the lawsuit did not have enough evidence in it. WKYT's Hillary Thornton is in Estill County with the latest in our top story at 5.30. But there's nothing Inside of an Estill County courtroom, attorneys asking that Advanced T-Norm Services, BES, LLC, and Corey Hoskins, the one individual named, all be dropped from the lawsuit filed by the Estill County Fiscal Court. While attorneys accepted the allegations, they say the complaint fails to state a viable cause and evidence. They also say their three defendants are not third-party beneficiaries to the contract with the county, so they in turn could not have breached that agreement. They received fees as a broker. They they were an arranger or broker. Attorneys for Estill County Fiscal Court with Judge Executive Wallace Taylor standing by arguing that the entities arranged or shipped illegal waste into the county and simply want the lawsuit dismissed at this point to avoid more information from coming out. No one wants to conduct discovery because we're going to pull back uh, a band-aid on a fairly ugly situation. Uh, so I can understand why they filed the motion to dismiss on the pleadings. The judge ultimately saying the motion to dismiss is premature. <laughs> the decision met with applause by many in the courtroom. Judge Executive Taylor says this morning's hearing is just one step in what he believes will be a long process. I'm sure we're going to be in court quite quite a bit. Personally, I don't feel like there's anything that is a danger to my people. Um, but they vi clearly violated the ordinances and the host agreement and they've got to pay for it because every load that comes through came through here jeopardized a lot of people's lives. In Estill County, Hillary Thornton, WKYT. Judge Executive Taylor says following Labor Day, they will begin collecting evidence for the case. The University of Kentucky is taking steps to deal with a controversial mural on campus. It shows the history of Lexington, but some people say the depictions of African Americans are offensive. Six months ago, the UK President Eli Capilouto formed a committee to talk about what to do with the mural, and today he announced the recommendations. Jennifer Palumbo joins us from the live desk. And Jennifer, exactly where is this mural? Sam, the mural is inside Memorial Hall, one of UK's most iconic buildings. Last year, the university covered it up after complaints that it gives an offensive and unrealistic view of slavery. Today, President Capilouto released the committee's findings about what to do next while the mural remains covered. They include restoring the work of art and adding context to the controversial images. UK graduate Anne Rice O'Hanlon painted the mural back in 1934. The president says he hopes to give the public the history behind it. In a video he released on Twitter today, Capilouto said, quote, I've read a lot about the artist, but we don't all know what she saw in the art as she composed it, and that's important to know. The recommendations also include educating people about the mural's history through events such as speaker series at Memorial Hall. At the live desk, Jennifer Palumbo, WKYT. Jennifer, thank you. Some history. The University of Kentucky was founded in 1865. It did not admit African American students until 1949. Attorney General Andy Bashir has filed a lawsuit against the nation's largest provider of kidney dialysis treatments. Bashir's lawsuit claims that Free Freefinus uh, Medical Holdings Incorporated ignored the health risks associated with the use of Grand, Grand Uflow, a, a product used in the dialysis process despite clinical trials finding it harmful. The lawsuit seeks to recover damages and civil penalties for the state, including restoring millions of dollars to the state's Medicaid program. We're pursuing justice for Kentuckians impacted by a product that they should have known was hurting them. Grand Uflow was on the market from 2003 until 2012 when it was recalled 
by the well, federal government. Police are warning about a group of traveling scam artists targeting elderly homeowners. Our county by county coverage at 5:30 begins in Washington County. The sheriff's office is warning the public about a report of a gypsy gypsies traveling in the area. They tell homeowners they have a problem with their roof or gutter or they offer a special on blacktop ceiling. The suspects perform a small amount of work before demanding payment, upwards of $4,000 sometimes. Deputies say the suspects are from out of state and are driving a red short bed Ram pickup truck with a white Chevy uh, with, stealing, uh, with sealing equipment in it. In Mercer County, police arrested a man after they say he pinned a person between a truck and a wall. Police say 18 year old Justin Deaton pulled into the parking lot of a Harrodsburg restaurant recklessly, smashing into a parked truck. The truck was then pushed forward, pinning a man between it and the building. A 17 year old was also knocked down by the truck, suffering. Minor injuries. Police say that after the crash, Deaton ran away while his passengers stayed on the scene and told police Deaton had been drinking. Deaton was arrested Tuesday night. The condition of the victim pinned between the truck and the wall has not been made public. September's here, and after a hot, humid, and rather wet August, it looks like we could not ask for better weather as we head into the Labor Day weekend. Let's check in with WKYT Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey with an early look at the forecast. Yeah, day one just about in the books, and so far, September's bringing it, bringing the nice weather back into the Bluegrass State. It's been a long time coming, huh? We look at our nine live sky cams from Interstate 65 through 75 into the mountains of eastern Kentucky. Everybody dealing with some sun and a little bit of fair weather cumulus clouds that are out there, just giving our skyline a little bit of flavoring. A lot of upper 70s showing up on a strong north to northeast wind, and look at that air. That is across parts of Indiana and Ohio. Well, that's where the air is coming from. It is even cooler up there with a lot of low 70s showing up from Indy to Dayton, Columbus, uh, up towards Chicago and Cleveland. So the numbers around here tomorrow will be even cooler. Thank you, cold front off to our south and southeast. What cloud cover you have out there now, watch what happens. As you get closer to sunset, you're going to notice the clouds all of a sudden beginning to dissipate. That'll set the stage for a much cooler night ahead. A lot of thermometer readings overnight dropping into the 50s. Short term forecast, it's all about the nice weather. Pre sundown, post sundown, readings go from the mid 70s to the mid 60s with fair skies that will carry us right on through the overnight. When I come back in a few minutes, guys, hour by hour forecast will take you into the majority. Of that long Labor Day weekend. Sounds nice. Thanks, Chris. Many of you may be traveling this holiday weekend, but if you're heading south to Florida or the Carolinas, better keep an eye out on Hurricane Hermine. The Category 1 storm is expected to make landfall in Florida overnight. People there are being told to expect more than a foot of rain and possible tornadoes. Our very own Micah Harris is currently in Florida right now. He has an update on the situation. Hey everybody, meteorologist Micah Harris back with you in Destin, Florida, talking about her mean head in our direction. We have the Wells Tail back behind us. Now this is a local landmark here in Destin. If you come to Destin a lot, you pretty much know where the Wells Tail is. Obviously, not many people are out here for today because the beach is still closed for the next 24 hours. Storm surge is bringing the water all the way up, close to the start of the Wells Tail. So that just shows you how bad the storm surge is, how agitated the water is. And these chairs, the blue chairs that you actually see, are typically about 40 yards up. So that just shows you they had to move all these back. And you know what? They gave them free for today. Typically, you got to pay for them. They said, you know what? You can just have them for today. There's just not many people out here. We're going to be weathering the storm, riding the storm out for the next 24 hours right here in Destin, Florida. I'm meteorologist Mike Harris for WKYT. All right, Micah, be safe down there. Hermine's upgrade from Tropical Storm makes it the fourth hurricane of 2016 in the Atlantic Basin. Police officers must be prepared to handle all kinds of situations and all kinds of people. Jerry has our good question tonight. Jerry says, what kind of training do the police get when it comes to people with disabilities like the ones with speech impairments and or the people who are deaf? How are the police trained for this? For an answer, I contacted the public information officer with Lexington Police, Brenna Angel. She says the police department's training section teaches several blocks of instruction, both to recruits and veteran officers. So, for example, in the Lexington Police Academy, they teach a sign language course. Police are trained in vulnerable adults, elder abuse, and training for people with hearing and speech disabilities. There's a special victim section for detectives who investigate elder and vulnerable adult abuse. Officers also receive a 40-hour course in helping people with mental health needs. 
To submit a good question, send an email to goodquestion at WKYT.com. The U.S. Post Office is hiring in parts of Kentucky. That story in about six minutes here on WKYT. I'm Bill Bryant. Governor Matt Bevin sets a special election to fill the seat of a congressman who is resigning. Donald Trump was in the region today as Hillary Clinton's running mate takes a swipe at him. The bottom line is on the way. Keep up with the latest news on WKYT.com. Join the conversation on Twitter and become a part of the WKYT Facebook family. A special election has been set after the sudden resignation of a Kentucky congressman. Bill Bryant has the details in the bottom line. Good evening. Governor Matt Bevan has already set the special election to fill Kentucky's first district congressional seat after the sudden announcement that Republican Ed Whitfield will resign next week. That special election will be the same day as the November general election. It comes a year after Whitfield announced he would not seek re-election this year. He was first elected in what had been a Democratic stronghold in western Kentucky in the big Republican wins of 1994. The parties will choose nominees ahead of time. It's widely believed they will be the same as the nominees for the full term, Republican James Comer and Democrat Sam Gaskins. It also means that the winner could be sworn in early and get a jump in seniority on the other incoming members of Congress. Kentucky dealing with a new onslaught of drug issues with a spike in overdoses over the last few weeks. Federal, state, and local governments are trying to get a handle on it. Our Miranda Combs has a WKYT investigation on that coming up in a few minutes. And you attorney for the Eastern District, Kerry Harvey, will join us on this week's edition of Kentucky Newsmakers. We'll talk about the challenge and some new strategies. Look for clips of that on our weekend morning newscasts and the full program Sunday morning. Donald Trump was in the region today addressing veterans in Cincinnati. He told them that America would stop apologizing, and he said schools would teach patriotism if he's elected president. It came as Democratic vice presidential candidate Tim Kaine criticized Trump. Trump's visit to Mexico, saying the Republican nominee choked by not demanding that Mexico pay for the wall that Trump proposes between the two countries. Trump says financing the wall was discussed. The Mexican president says it was not. EKU considering privatizing some campus responsibilities to save money. The university is looking for vendors to provide custodial and landscaping services. Eastern officials say they would want third-party vendors to hire the crews who work on campus now. Now, if they decide to move forward with the proposal. Bill Bryant, WKYT. The U.S. Postal Service is now accepting applications for several temporary jobs in Kentucky and southern Indiana, including Louisville and Lancaster. Positions are part-time and hourly. Anyone interested can visit USPS.com careers for more information. Now, your hour-by-hour -hour forecast with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey. Beautiful sky out there on the first day of September, getting some of those fair weather cumulus clouds to go up out there. And you can see some of those on our live sky cam. Notice how flat they are. They're not really growing up in the atmosphere. And as the sun gets lower in our skyline, those little pancake clouds, because they're so flat, are going to begin to dissipate. Currently upper 70s to around 80 north to northeasterly winds at 15 miles per hour. And that's going to continue to usher in those very pleasant temperatures all across central and eastern Kentucky. So what you see in field today is what you're going to be getting for at least a few more days. Defender Radar Network, even with a little cloud cover, I've got nothing to show you. And it's going to stay that way for a little while longer. Let's break down your Friday forecast. First and foremost, over the next three days, sun, some high clouds, pleasant temperatures yet again. Tomorrow may be one of the best days of the entire year. I'll take it. Saturday, not too far behind it. Another great day. Plenty of sunshine around. A little more cloud cover southeastern Kentucky where you got that much of a chance to squeeze out a nice loaded shower. Sunday, nice weather rolls on. More in the way of sunshine. Pleasant temperatures overall as we gear up for that Labor Day forecast that looks equally as nice. If you're a Wildcat fan, you're heading out to Commonwealth Stadium on Saturday. We're kicking off a brand new season, and we're doing so in fine, fine fashion. Low 80s for tailgating. Sun is high in the sky, though, so if you're out uh, from under a tent tailgating, slap on the sunscreen. You're going to get a little burn out there, and uh, you won't even know it because the temperature is going to be so pleasant. 74 around kickoff, still hanging on to a little high cloud cover. Should be an excellent view of that sunset, by the way, just after kickoff. Should be a nice little glow to the 
sky. By the time the fourth quarter wraps up, celebrating a W, drive home 64 with nice weather across the entire area. Here's the hour by hour forecast throughout central and eastern Kentucky. Out this evening, we go from the low and mid 70s to the low and mid 60s between, let's say, 7 and 11 o'clock. A lot of upper 50s in the morning. Fog can be thick around the waterways. Low 70s at noontime tomorrow. Let's go to 5 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. That's officially the weekend and a long holiday weekend at that. Last weekend of summer, unofficially, right? Mid and upper 70s. Tomorrow evening, high school football games looking good yet again. And past few weeks have been awfully steamy out there at the fields, not so much tomorrow night. Check out those Saturday morning lows. This has got a Richmond at 53 degrees, 54 Danville, 55 Mount Sterling, most areas 50s to start. Mid 70s around noontime, 5 o'clock rolls around, a lot of upper 70s showing up throughout the land. And by 11 o'clock on Saturday night, low 60s, and that'll set the stage for another cool night, Saturday night into Sunday, with the 50s that will be around to jumpstart a brand new day. Here's our hurricane down in the eastern Gulf of Mexico. Is it going to impact our weather? Short answer to that is no. That's going to take a trip right up the east coast of the United States, likely staying just inland. I think this is underdone off the uh, mid-Atlantic coast into New England. That is likely to strengthen back into a storm as it comes off the coast. Water temperatures off the coast of Jersey right now, roughly 80 to 84 degrees, way above what we should be seeing up there, and that may strengthen this storm again. Not an impact on our weather. Don't wish any ill will on anyone, obviously, and that's a big ticket item up the eastern seaboard, guys, but it's going to leave us alone. Upper 70s tomorrow, low 80s on Saturday. Next week, yeah, we'll steam it up. Tomorrow, getaway day yeah. for a lot of folks. Uh -huh. Maybe scooting out of work a little early. Can you imagine the lakes this weekend? Oh, oh packed. Yeah. Jam-packed. weather. Can you imagine yeah. tailgating this weekend? Yeah. Jam-packed, yes. <laughs> With us. In my mind, I'm already there. <laughs> Thanks. Well, tomorrow mark, uh, night already marks the third week. Can you believe it of the high school football season, Brian? Yeah, I can believe it. I will not be on those lakes. I'll be here with you guys. Time flies when you're having fun when you're not on the lake. And it's rivalry night in Titletown. That's the key. Matt Elam, the biggest wildcat of them all, finally has his time to shine. How is he getting better? Find out next. UK and Southern Miss this weekend. And for Matt Elam, he enters his junior season with a great deal of responsibility that he's rarely had since arriving in Lexington. It is time for Matt Elam to cash in on the hype which surrounded the five star recruit a couple of years ago. Mark Stoops promised he would expect more from Elam and the other guys, and he's done just that. Yeah, I would say happy with the camp, and not just with me, but as a whole, as a D, I feel like. Coach Stoops definitely put more on us this year, just more, just see if we can handle it. And I feel like we definitely handled it. To get better, you must face stiff competition. Elam's mentor on the D-line was Melvin Lewis. He went at it constantly in practice with center John Toth. So it's Elam's turn to get a dose of Toth. You go against Toth, you know that's one of the best centers you'll see out there. So it's good and good experience for him. And he's going to have um, his hands full this week because uh, Southern Miss has a very good center too. I go against Toth every day. I feel like he's one of the best centers in the nation. So I look at him like, oh, he's on a watch list. Okay, cool. You know what I mean? I go against Toth every day. So he gets the best of me uh, a little bit of the time. So you know what I mean? I look at it like, okay, it's just another dude. So. Uh, how many times has Toth won? Uh, a little bit of the time. A little bit smaller than that, yeah. So <laughs> I'm going to stick with that answer. <laughs> but how has Toth improved Elam? That's the real question. Help me to improve just because I can't. Say if I power him one time and he gets pushed back a little bit too much, he's going to come back and probably swipe my hands down. I'm like, dang, you know what I mean? Like, he, he got the best of me, so then I come back with something else, and it's just like a, just an over and over type of thing. So it's just a, a constant, just who who can get there first, and who can beat this person in doing this or that. So, nice competition every day in practice. Sounds like it. Wildcats against Southern Miss Saturday night, 7:30, Commonwealth Stadium. You can see it on ESPNU tomorrow night. The city of Danville and most of Boyle County will be on shutdown for a showdown in Titletown. These two football giants of Central Kentucky will meet for the 55th time. They have won a total, wow, look at that. They've won a total of 17 state championships. Just saying the name Danville expands Boyle County lineman Hunter Floyd's vocabulary. 
I'd say it kind of like gives you a little cringe, has a little cringe to it. Uh, it's a really good rivalry, and uh, in the game, it's a really good atmosphere. The whole city comes in, fills the stands, and uh, it's a really good atmosphere. Danville, right out of that, right, right after that game, which is always a heated rivalry, and Danville should have one of their better teams. They got, you know, a four-year starter back at quarterback, and they always got good skilled people. It will be a barn burner tomorrow. Also, Trinity and Lafayette. We'll talk about that some other time. That's sports. We'll be right back.